Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Jujutsu Kaisen, but today we're going to be checking out episode 11, and last time on episode 10, the fierce fight between Mahito and Nanami had begun, and they seemed to be pretty evenly matched for the most part as the fight was going on, with Mahito's human raisins that he keeps in his pocket being able to keep Nanami on the defensive. He couldn't really get in and do very many attacks as a result of it, and he did say that his ability would probably be a bad match for him, and uh, it's a little debatable as to what he meant by that, but some have said that maybe it's because if he increases the size of himself or of the things he's attacking him with, his ability might be less effective on them. He It might be less efficient at creating weak points on larger opponents, which that might be true, but it could also just be the fact that he's you know, pretty aggressive with his style here, keeping him from getting in close, which would be a bad match for him. But we also got a little bit of Mahito's perspective on humanity because he believes that nothing matters, that life is of little significance. And by of little, I mean it is of no significance. Human life, any life at all, means nothing. And as a result, just do whatever you want, right? I mean, if life has no meaning, then yeah, just do whatever. Am I, am I right? That's what that's what he believes anyway. And what he said specifically, what one thing was that just as someone would eat when they feel hungry, if you feel the desire to kill someone, then yeah, kill them. Because hey, if you feel like doing something, then why should you not do it? Because that's stupid. Even if you want to argue that life holds no inherent meaning or value, it just in general. It holds value to them, those who you would do harm to. So, keep that in mind. But hey, I'm not here to give a philosophy lesson. I'm here to react to anime. So, let us just begin. What the fr Okay, wow. Yeah, they sure set him up to fall there. Poor Yoshino. Mm, he was just starting to see the light just a little bit with, uh, he had some friendship with Itadori, which was nice and wholesome. And then he's like, ah, you know, if killing someone will taint my soul, I don't want to do that. And then they dropped the finger in there, which brought in the curse, which ate his mom. And put ice packs onto her. Did it do that? I don't know. He was already incredibly troubled before that happened, so of course, He's gonna slip and slide right down to the abyss instantaneously when when something like that occurs. And uh, apparently he tried to... Mahito tried to trick him into thinking that that guy was the one who put the finger there. Because he's like, oh, you know, some people, you know, they've got access to stuff like this. You know, they got a lot of free time. And they, they might be able to do this, but... And, you know, in, in the dark place his mind was in, of course, he's gonna listen to him and immediately suspect uh, the rich boy like him. And when it comes to these powers he's gotten, I'm guessing that uh, he had a little uh, idle transfiguration done, perhaps. Like he just stuck his hands on his head and just morphed him, morphed his soul a little bit to give him some of these powers here, like where he could levitate him and he... I guess he... What did he do? Stick him with like a poison needle in his arm or something that just blotched him up real bad? I don't know, but it's pretty... Pretty intense. So his battle with Itadori is obviously going to be something to behold because Itadori was already quick to see him as a friend and he's not gonna wanna fight him or beat him up or anything, but he's not gonna have much of a choice here because <laughs> he's obviously gonna wanna fight back. We don't know to what extent his powers are at right now to where maybe he could hold him off in his base without having to rely on Sukuna because I mean, honestly, Sukuna would just be overkill. Now, at this point, Sukuna would just totally wipe, wipe the floor with him. And Ichidori is no pushover. He's plenty tough, even without much cursed abilities. He can hold his own. 
So maybe he will not even be forced to use Sukuna and can just fight him at base. Maybe beat some sense into him, or more accurately, he'd probably talk some sense into him, even if he is not going to be too rational at the moment. But anyway, that is it for now though guys, so thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe to be updated on more, that would be fantastic, thank you very much. But next time is episode 12, what was that called, to you someday? Hmm, don't know if that's what that's referring to necessarily. My mind's going back to them talking about how Itadori would have to kill somebody someday. I don't know if that is connected to it or maybe it means something else. That's just where my mind's going. And it's interesting that apparently Itadori is just first in the scene right now. He just happened to, to roll up on here and with uh, nobody backing him up apparently or helping him out. Hmm. I mean, you'd think that, uh, because they said those, uh, Windows would be watching for this kind of thing and reported immediately, but I guess each door was just quicker on the draw and just happened to be nearby or something But I guess I'll find out a little bit more about that next time. That's gonna be next Saturday Hopefully yeah, probably I don't think there's gonna be much that's gonna stand in my way from making more uh, Jujutsu Kaisen videos at this point probably shouldn't be too interrupted with them at this point I apologize for them having been so interrupted lately, but you know how it is. It's it's been it's been pretty pretty nuts. So for now, that is it. Hope to catch you next time. Till then, I will see you guys all later.